When I was drifting out in sin, I had no peace, no joy within. But Jesus came and he made me glad. The dearest friend I ever had, he saved my soul. Oh, bless his name. I'll never forget the day he came. Well, he makes me glad when I am sad. The dearest friend I ever had. When Jesus comes, the way is bright. For he's the way, the truth, the light. He cheers me on when I am sad. The dearest friend I ever had. He saved my soul. Oh, bless his name. I'll never forget the day he came. Well, he makes me glad. When I am sad, when I am sad, the dearest friend, the friend I ever had. Oh, sinner, come to Jesus now. At His dear feet, just humbly bow. He'll save your soul and make you glad. The dearest friend I ever had, he saved my soul. He saved my soul. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. I'll never forget. I'll never forget the day he came. Well, he makes me glad. He makes me glad. I am sad. When I am sad. The dearest friend. The dearest friend I ever had. Take these hands and lift them up, for I have not the strength to praise you near enough, for I have nothing, I have nothing without you. Take my voice and pour it out. Let it sing the songs of mercy I have found. For I have nothing, I have nothing without you. And all my soul needs is all your love to cover me for all the world will see that I have nothing without. Take my body and build it up. May be broken for an offering of love. For I have nothing, I have nothing without you. And all my soul needs is all your love to cover me for all the world will see that I have nothing that I love. 
with all my heart with all my soul with all my mind with all my strength I can find take my time here on this earth and let it glorify all that you are worth for I am nothing I am nothing without you and all my up my eyes to heaven as I so often do and I wondered about that land that lies beyond God's skies so blue then I felt his presence near me and I whispered, Lord, what will this be? What wonderful thing that lies out, out of reach for me. He said, your eyes have never seen, oh, but you love everything. upon the golden street of your new home though i've never been there but i know enough yet it keeps me pressing on now i'm tossed about and oftentimes I almost lose my way when I look to him my faith can see that land of endless days there is nothing down here worth losing it all when Brother, I 
especially I thought <clears throat> down here we may not have much yeah, God bless her tonight. but if we got Jesus we got it all Amen. and I thought he's done gone and prepared a place for us yeah, yeah. as you know but now I'm just a big cry baby but if I couldn't cry I'd be worried yeah. but I thought you know after a while, I'm a striving now, maybe having to push and go. But I thought after a while, it'll be worth it all. Yes, it and I was thinking about him singing a song, Payday, after a while, yeah. it'll be a payday. Yeah. It'll be one that we won't be thinking really what it's like. But I thought it's going to be worth living down here yeah. to make it there. And I praise him for his good sweet spirit. Amen. Oh, where do I go when there's nobody else to turn to? Who can I talk to when there's nobody left to listen? Who can I lean on when there's no foundation stable? I go to the rock. I know he's able. I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountain and the mountains stand by me. Well, the earth all around me is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Where can I hide till the storms have all passed yeah. over? Where can I run to when the winds of sorrow threaten? Is there a refuge in the times of tribulation? When my soul needs consolation, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountains and the mountains stand by me. The earth all around me is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Oh, where can I hide? Oh, till the storms have all passed over. Oh, where can I run to? Oh, when the winds of sorrow threaten, is there a refuge in the times of tribulation? When my soul needs consolation, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountains and the mountains stand by me. When the earth all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Oh, where can I go? Oh, when there's nobody else I can turn to, oh, who can I talk to? When there's nobody left to listen, who can I lean on? When there's no foundation stable, I go to the rock, I know he's able. I go to the rock. And I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the soul that the builders rejected. I run to the mountains and the mountains stand by me. When the earth all around me is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. Oh, where can I hide? Oh, till the storms have all passed over. Oh, where can I run to? 
when the storm is there a refuge in the times of tribulation when my soul needs consolation I go to the rock I go to the rock of my salvation I go to the stone that the builders rejected I run to the mountains and the mountains stand by me when the earth all around me is sinking sand on Christ that solid rock I stand when I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. I run to the mountains and the mountains stand by me. When the earth all around me is sinking sand, on Christ that solid rock I stand. When I need a shelter, when I need a friend, I go to the rock. I thought that number one would surely be me. I thought I what I wanted to be. I thought I could build on life's sinking sand, but I can't even walk without you holding Holding my hand, the mountain. 
I thought I could do a lot on my own. I thought I could make it all alone. And I thought of myself as a mighty big man. But I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountains too high and the valleys too wide. But down chapter 8 and verse number 1 Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives and early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them and the scribes and Pharisees besought brought unto him a woman taken in adultery and when they had set her in the midst they said unto him master this woman was taken in adultery in the very act now Moses and the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. And when they continued asking him, he lift up himself and said to them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it being convicted by their own conscience. Boy, your own conscience will get you sometimes, won't it? Being convicted by their own conscience. Went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman... He said unto her, Woman, where are thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No, Lord, no man, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Let's pray this morning. Father, I love you. I thank you, God, for the privilege to be in your house today. Thank you, God, for every song that's been sung here today, for your spirit that I feel in this place today. Pray, God, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that would come upon me. Help me, God, to preach this word with conviction and with truth today. Lord, anoint us, help us, touch us, minister to those that hear this word. Let it be a word in season today. And let it bring forth fruit and the everlasting life in us, Jesus, I pray. In your holy name I pray today, Lord. Can everyone say amen today? Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. It's a, uh, this is quite a scene here. Jesus is in the temple. The Bible's pretty specific about where he's at. He's went into the temple. He's went there for the purpose of teaching the people as he always did. And as it always was at this time, everywhere that Jesus went, 
Brother Billy, there was always a crowd that gathered up. Everywhere he was, there was a crowd. There was an excitement and an enthusiasm that was surrounding the teachings of the Lord Jesus. They'd never heard teachings like he was beginning to teach them. And as he was there and they was in the temple, or near the temple, this crowd of people, they gathered together around the Lord and they are listening to his teaching. It's quite the setting. You imagine a large group of people, a crowd, they're there, they're attentively listening to what the Lord has to say. When all of a sudden, everything is disrupted. and it's, It would be like us having a church here this morning. All of a sudden, a group of men just jerking the back door open and running up to the front of the church and just taking over the whole meeting. That's exactly what they done. They took over the whole entire session here that the Lord was having while He was trying to teach. They just burst in. They bring this woman to Jesus. They come right up to where he is and they just take over. They take over the whole meeting, take over everything that's going on. And it shows us something this morning very, that I want to point out to us, it's very important about the attitude that some people have. Grandpa was teaching this morning. He was talking about how that religion is one of the greatest things that Satan likes to use, Brother David. Satan loves religion. People this morning are comfortable in religion when the matter of fact is they ain't even saved. They've got comfortable in their religion. They understand where they're at and it's a comfortable place to them because of being comfortable where they are. They never come on in to that place of salvation. That's why the Bible talks about making your peace calling and election sure. Every one of us don't need to take for granted that we are comfortable in religion when we fail to have salvation. Can I get an amen to that this morning? Amen. And it shows something about these religious people. They came, they come dragging this woman that they've caught in the very act of sin. They come dragging her right up to Jesus in front of this group of people and they begin to make an open public humiliation of this woman. Now it shows something about their attitude. It shows that they had an attitude that they felt more important about where they was and what they was doing Above everybody else, they should have been considerate of the crowd of people that was around them. They should have considered everybody else and what was going on there. But they disrupted this meeting because they felt like their agenda was the most important thing going, even if it meant that Jesus had to quit what he was doing and deal with what they'd brought to the forefront. Can I get an amen? How many people knows today that never is their agenda any greater than the one that the Lord's got? Never is their agenda greater than the one the Lord has. And so these people, they come and they bring this woman. And the Bible says this. The Bible says this. They set her in the midst. That means that Jesus is in the center of this crowd. There's a large crowd gathered around him, listening to him teach. And they disrupt it. They bring this woman. They've taken in a very act of sin. And they set her right in the middle where all the attention is. Everybody in that crowd. Can you imagine this this morning? Everybody in that crowd has got their attention focused on that woman. And upon her sin and upon what she has done. She becomes the spectacle of attention. Now this ain't my message this morning. But I want to tell us this this morning. Anytime that anything becomes the center of attention other than Jesus Christ. It's out of order. Can I get an amen to that today? Can I get an amen to that today? Would you help me preach a little while? Glory to God. Anytime that anything becomes the center of attention more than Jesus. Listen, I love this church. But seven pines, the name should never be the center of attention. The Lord Jesus Christ should be the center of attention in the house of God. Anytime that anything becomes the center of attention more than Jesus, it's always out of order. And this woman and what she's done becomes the center of attention, Sister Carolyn. And these men begin to openly discuss her sin. Can you imagine how much humiliation this woman must have felt to be brought into a crowd of people and there to openly discuss her sin, openly discuss how she was wrong and what was going on. They begin to openly discuss everything about her in front 
of everybody. And they asked this question, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in, in uh, was taking adultery in the very act. They're saying, we caught this woman in the very act of sin. We, uh, we caught her right exactly where she was. And I want to say this this morning, she got caught. That's a fact. It's a fact that nobody can dispute. Nobody can deny the fact that this woman got caught in the act of sin. She got caught. And I want to say this this morning. It's the way it always is. When sin is always, always it happens like this. If you dibble and dally in sin after a while, it catches up. It always catches up. The Bible is very specific. When it says, be sure your sin will find you out. There's never been a man, woman, boy, or girl that ever got in the sinning business that after a while the sinning business caught up to them and after a while it caught them and they got caught. That's the way it always happens. They got caught. She got caught in her sins. After a while, it catches up. The sins of the night, they get brought to the light. And she got caught. And I can't imagine how in the world she must have felt. I can't imagine what embarrassment and humiliation and, and moral failure and degradation and, and humiliation that was brought to this woman. But I want to go a step further and I want to say this today. I am so thankful. I feel the Lord up here right now. I am so thankful, Sister Carolyn, that she got caught. I hate what happened. I hate how these men went about it. They went about it the worst way that I've ever seen people go about bringing out and exposing sin. I've been around people that's had the attitude that you're supposed to openly rebuke everybody, but that's not how you need to do it. There's a right way to do everything. There's a right way to deal with situations. I know that in the church there's things that happen. we got to deal with it, but there's a right way and there's a wrong way, and the right way is always Jesus' way. The right way never brings embarrassment. Great Lamb of God, it never brings hurt. It never brings humiliation. It doesn't make people want to crawl on the pew. Don't make people want to leave the church. It makes them want to run to the altar and give their heart back to the Lord, confess their sin, and know that if we confess our sin, we have a Savior that's faithful and just to forgive us our sin. I want to say today, I hate how they brought this woman's sin out, but I thank God she got caught because when she got caught, it brought her to the feet of Jesus. It brought her to the help that she needed. Oh, yes. Oh. Whew. Oh, Lord. Listen. Listen. People have a tendency. The Bible, I don't know why I feel like preaching about this. This is how I feel preaching. The Bible, the Bible teaches us that because, because that the evil sentence, because it's not executed, judgment is not executed speedily. The hearts of men are set to do evil because people look at things sometimes that's going wrong and they think there's nothing that's happening. There's no judgment there. They have a tendency to keep on going and going and going in the wrong direction. But I think God. Sharon, I thank God for the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. I want you to know, I hope I can get this out like it's on my heart today. I thank God for the convicting power of the Holy Ghost that has the ability to come into my life and to catch me where I am and tell me that's the wrong direction. You're going the wrong way. That's a dead end street you're on. I'm telling you, I tell the Lord all the time, God rebuke me, but don't rebuke me in your anger. God chastise me. Don't chastise me in your displeasure. I'm telling you there's a loving hand of God that's stern, it's gentle, it's merciful, but brother it's a hand that can get on your life and steer you in the right direction. I'm telling you today, we need the hand of God to steer us every move we make. This is a wicked day. It's a wicked hour. We can't make it on our own. We'll never get there by ourselves. We need the power of the Holy Ghost to convict us and guide us lead us, protect us keep us oh. oh Lord Whew. she got caught she got caught Carolyn got caught 
I'm telling you, I used to have a door open where I went up to the ministry up at, up at the federal prison. I'd preach to them old boys. I'm telling you, some of the best things that ever happened to some of them boys was they got caught. I'd tell you, I don't know why I feel like preaching this today, but this is what I feel like preaching. They'd tell you, you know, if I hadn't got caught, I'd still be out there on the street. If I hadn't got caught and locked up in here, I'll never forget. I was preaching there one night, and I'm telling you, I don't know, there's 90, maybe 90, 100 people in that room that night. I preached that night, and that Hispanic brother got up, come down to the altar and said, I never heard. I never heard about Jesus dying on the cross. I never heard the gospel message. You have to tell me more about what will you mean he died on a cross for the sins of the world. Had never heard about Jesus. Never heard the gospel message of Jesus Christ. I thought God if he'd have never got caught. If he'd have never got caught where he is at he had never been found. I'm telling you sometimes God hymns us up. And sometimes God hymns us in. Not because he hates us. Not because he's against us. Not because he's just wanting to judge us. Not because he's wanting to condemn us. Sometimes God allows things to happen in our life because God's steering us toward the cross. Sometimes God allows people to cross your path. You wonder why in the world, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost up here. You wonder why in the world did them people ever have to be in my life? I tell you what, they had to be in your life. God was using them to bring you to the feet of Jesus. Whoo. Ask this woman. Ask her when she leaves this, this, this day, this discourse with a Carl. You ask her and she'll tell you it's a lot better to be shamed and be saved than it is to never know that you was wrong and to go on in your sins. You amen to that today? She'll tell you it's a lot better to be convicted than to be condemned. Am I preaching all right today? Woo! Listen, listen, there's people today, there's a gospel today that's condemning everybody. But that's not what Jesus came to do. If we're condemned, the Bible teaches us because we're condemned already. We're condemned because of our lack of faith, our own belief. We condemn ourselves. But the Spirit of God comes to convict. That's right. The Holy Ghost comes to convict men of their sin. He comes to turn a light on and expose them of their sin. But He doesn't just leave them there in that state of exposure. He then turns and exposes the cross. He not only comes convinces them, convicts them of their sin. He then convinces them of a Savior. That's what happened to this woman this day. She got convicted of her sin. But brothers and sisters, she got introduced to the Savior of glory. Ain't you glad one day that conviction got on your heart when you was running in a wrong direction a hundred miles an hour and all time Holy Ghost conviction came on you and convicted you and led you to the cross of Calvary. We got a church where today they don't want to be convicted. They don't want to be convicted. And I'm telling you, I want to be convicted. Whew. I'm being as honest as I know how to be today. I tell him all the time, God show me. God search me. Come on, the Bible teaches us to pray that way. Try my heart. Try my heart. See if there be any wicked way in me. I love it when Grandpa gets a teaching about this being the judgment. That's the true saints of God. Right here's the judgment seat for every Christian. Right here at the altar. Right here's the judgment where we can come clean and get things right. I'm telling you, I want to be found right, don't you? Oh, God. These men, these men, these religious men have no idea, no idea that God is using their stubborn, self-willed, hard-hearted, religious ways to take a sinner woman and bring her to the feet of Jesus. Whew, can I get an amen to that today? Glory to God. It must feel better up here than it does out there. Hallelujah. Glory. Bring her straight to the feet of Jesus. 
I'm telling you, when you get to feeling like things are out of control, you need to understand there's a God in heaven that's not, He is not, He is not oblivious to what's going on. He sits high, Carolyn, and He looks low. Everything that's going on in the world today, God understands it. God knows exactly what's going to happen. And God is able, the Bible teaches us, to cause the very wrath of the ungodly to bring praise unto Him. All the way down to the book of Revelation, when the Antichrist sets up His kingdom on this earth and thinks that He is going to be the God of this world, He's nothing more than a pawn in the hand of God fulfilling the prophecies of scripture to bring about the will of God I'm telling you today God is in control we may think it's out of control but God is in control he's sovereign he's holy he's omnipotent he's almighty I'm telling you his ways are higher than our ways his thoughts are higher than our thoughts I'm telling you God has got a plan and it's one in his time. Woo. These men, these men could have cared less about this woman. They weren't a bit more interested in her soul being saved than nothing. All they'd done was went out to a side of town where they knew there were some corrupt things going on and found somebody in the act of sin, drugged them down there, made a public spectacle out of them to try to trick Jesus. That's all they're doing. They said, what does Moses in the law say? What does the law say about how to handle this situation? Jesus knew that it was a question. It didn't matter, Andrew, what answer he gave. It was the wrong answer. Man, me and you must be on the same page this morning. Glory to God. There's people just like Grandpa says this morning, they got a preconceived idea. Don't matter what you show them in the Bible, how you talk to them, they are got a preconceived idea and nothing's going to change the way they think. Yeah, I'm going to tell you how to handle people like that. I'm going to tell you we handle it just like Jesus did. I'm telling you, Jesus, he knew that if he said, let's stone her, they're going to say, you don't have the right to stone her. You don't have the power to stone her. They're going to try to pin him against the Roman government. If Jesus said, let's have mercy on her, they was going to say, no, we got to follow the law. You don't keep the law of Moses. Any answer he gave was going to be the wrong answer because they thought they had a way to trick him up and entrap him. But Jesus never answered them a word. He went on, the Bible teaches us, just like he never heard them. Jesus, the Bible said, stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Am I preaching all right today? Woo! Glory to God. Acted just like he never heard a word they were saying. He went on about, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when it comes to this business of helping people that need help, you've got to learn how to stop your ears up to what everybody outside the four walls of this is saying. I don't care. I mean this in all, I mean this in all respect this morning. I don't care what the church down the road or up the road says. I'm worried about what God wants us to do right here. And if God sends them in here for us to help, let's help them and not worry what the critics have to say. I don't know about you today. I feel the Holy Ghost up here. We need the blessing of God more than we need the approval of everybody around us. Woo. We need the blessing of God. We need the blessing of God, the favor of God. Jesus stoops down on the ground. He stoops down on the ground. He goes on writing, David. You can be seated if you want to. Thank you. He goes on writing, Sister Betty, just like he never heard of. Whew. Glory to God. They keep on, they keep on, they keep on, they keep on. Whoo! They keep on, they keep on, they keep on. He just keeps on writing. Eventually they push him to the point that he raises up. He raises up. Now there's a, lot of, there's a lot of debate. A lot of debate. 
about what it is that he wrote on the ground. I don't think any of us really know what it was that Jesus wrote on the ground. I've heard people say they felt like that he wrote the sins of them other men. That's maybe possible because something convicted their conscience. And I've heard other people say all kinds of different things. But I'll tell you this, when I studied this out, it's been a long time ago I studied this out. When I did, I learned that when, you, when the Bible speaks of writing here, it's more like it speaks of registering, like you're registering something. You're writing a list down. So I kind of feel like, I, don't, I, I can't prove this, but I do believe maybe that Jesus was registering every complaint that they filed against that woman. He wouldn't say nothing. But I think maybe he was registering the complaint on the ground because it's not near as important this morning about what he wrote as it is where he wrote. He wrote on the ground. The Bible said in the dust. He's in the dust on the ground. Now preacher, what's important about that? When we go back to the beginning of the day, we're at the temple. If you understand anything about the temple where he's teaching on the outside of the temple, it's brick paved. There's brick pavers everywhere. It's like a brick paved road, if you can imagine that today. And all this dust, it's a thin layer of dust on this brick paved road. Jesus stoops down on a hard surface in the dust, takes his finger, and begins to register, I believe, every complaint against that woman. Now what Jesus... Jesus is saying, and what he's saying to everybody around is, I'm registering this in the dust. It's only temporary. It can rain, it'll wash away. The wind can blow, it'll wash away. They can walk across it, it'll disappear. What Jesus was saying, all of this may be true. Everything you're saying may be true. I'm writing it down, she's guilty. But in my presence, it's only temporary. Hallelujah. Ain't you glad today that your sins was only temporary in the presence of Jesus? I don't know about you. But he wrote some things there. It ain't there no more. I get an amen today. Can I preach just a few more minutes today? Glory to God. I'm telling you, there's some things, Kevin Howard, they're true. But they're only temporary in the presence of Jesus. I'm telling you, church people, it does not matter what somebody's done. doesn't matter where they've been. I believe this with all of my heart. This has caused me more trouble than anything I've ever preached is that I preach a gospel that says Jesus forgives everybody. And when Jesus forgets it, he, for, he forgives it, he wipes it away. I'm telling you, it don't matter what somebody was. It matters who who they are. And if they're washed in the blood of Jesus, I'm telling you, they're a child of God. I said they're a child. God, give us church people that look at people like Jesus does. <laughs> Woo! True. That's true. He done it. She done it. Woo! But it's going to leave here. It's all going to go away. I'm telling you, you can outlive it. Whew, I feel like preaching this today. You can outlive it. You can outlive it. I'm telling you, there's things that happened in your past. They're your past. You've got to learn how to leave them there and go on for God. Let the devil worry about your past. Let God handle your future. Amen. Let the devil and everybody else worry about what happened back there. I'm telling you, there's a bloodline that behind that bloodline, God don't see it. God don't count it. I'm telling you, it's not against you. It's set up forever in heaven. Woo! Finally, he stands up, looks at him. Whoever of you ain't got no sin in your life. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost up here. Whoever among you, whoever among you, has got a perfect record. You start this mess of stoning this woman. Woo! I'm telling you from the greatest, the eldest, the most holiest, right down to the least, one by one, convicted by their own conscience.
Because they remembered one thing. Everybody's got a past. Preach on, preacher, this morning. Everybody's got a past. Everybody's got something they don't want everybody else to find out about. Am I in the right church house this morning? Woo! And one by one by one, they dropped their rocks and they walked away. I tell you, I'm just going to preach like I feel this morning. Woo! I'm telling you what, when I was praying about taking this church, y'all asked me to take this church. The, I felt the Lord lead me this way, but one thing that really persuaded my, prayer persuaded, persuaded my decision more than anything. But something that persuaded my decision, it didn't take me long every day to figure out there ain't no rocks around here. <laughs> Woo! Ain't no rock throwers around here. Glory to God. Am I preaching all right today? I tell you what, I say that's what we need in this hour. I'm telling you, we're in a hurting day and a hurting hour. I believe with every fiber of my being that if this church will stay faithful and we'll keep the attitude we got and the love for God we've got, we'll keep going the right direction. God's going to send the hurting, the wounded, the people out there that need help. They need a refuge. They need an oasis. They need somebody to love them. They don't need somebody to judge them. They I need somebody to tell them you can make it. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. Woo. I'm about done today. Sister Betty, they drop every rock they got. Whew. I heard an old preacher one time, Brother David, he preached on don't throw rocks. Don't throw them. Dropped them. They dropped every rock they had. They begin to walk away. And all of a sudden, it's just her and Jesus. Jesus looks at her, knowing everything she had done. He said, woman, where are thine accusers? Lord, there ain't nobody left here. There ain't nobody here accusing me. He said, neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. That's still the call today. I forgive you. Go and sin no more. Listen, I know, I know there's people today that's preaching a gospel that says sin less, do better, but the call is still go and sin no more. But I believe it just like Jesus said it. Neither do I condemn thee. I'm telling you, it don't matter who comes in this door, what their past is, the blood of Jesus Christ, Brother Monroe Brown, is sufficient to wash away every sin. It's able to take the black his heart and make it pure white. It's able to take the vilest mind and wash it clean and make it whole. I'm telling you, that's the call of day. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Yeah. Woo. Let's stand all over the house. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is what I like. This is what I love about this, Sandra. When she's walking away, when she's walking away, you can almost imagine her saying, I really didn't get what I deserved. The law said, she's going to die, Brother Billy. But Jesus came and said, she don't need to die. I'm going to let her live. Woo! And what the law could not do, in that it was weak to the flesh. Woo! All the law could do, but I feel the Holy Ghost up here. All the law could do, Brother David, was condemn her in her sin and pronounce her guilty. In what the law could not do, that it was weak to the flesh, the Apostle Paul said, God, woo, sin in His Son, redeemed us who were sinful flesh from the law. That's what the Bible teaches. I'm telling you, the law couldn't do nothing about it. But Jesus said, I just don't acknowledge the fact that she's guilty. I'm going to give her forgiveness. I'm going to give her mercy. I'm going to give her grace. The law said she deserves to be stoned, but Jesus said she deserves to be forgiven. Hey Amen. Ain't you glad today you didn't get what you deserved? Is that all right preaching today? I'm telling you, David, I don't deserve to be a preacher of the gospel. I don't deserve to be in seven pines this morning. 
I'm telling you, there's nothing that irks this preacher. That when people get the attitude on them, Grandpa, that someone or other, they deserve the love and the mercy and the grace and the righteousness of God. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, if we all got what we deserved, we'd ever one been dead and gone and in hell a long time ago. But by the call, Jesus gave us what we didn't deserve. What I deserved was judgment, but Jesus on the cross gave me mercy. Hallelujah. I didn't deserve forgiveness, sister. Kevin, but that's exactly what I got. I'm glad Jesus gave me what I didn't deserve. He gave me what I could not deserve, what I could not earn, what I couldn't get, what I couldn't win on my own. He gave it to me freely. Let's give the Lord a praise this morning. Father, I thank you I thank you, Lord. I feel your presence. I'm humbled in your presence. God, don't never let us get self-righteous. Don't never let us be critical. God, fill us with a Christ-like character. Jesus, give me a Christ-like compassion. Give us a heart like you had. Let us carry on the work that you started. I thank you, Lord, for Calvary today. I thank you, Lord. What I deserved, I didn't get. And what I did, did not deserve, you freely gave me. I love you today, Lord. I thank you. I praise you. I want to live for you, Lord. Touch every heart in this house today. Have a life in this house today. Have a person that may hear this sermon. God, speak to their heart. God, if anybody's here today that's not for sure, that maybe a young person, God, that hasn't gave their heart to you, speak to their heart today. Lead us, God, to the cross. Lead us to that confession of faith. Thank you for your love for us today, Jesus. We give you the praise. In your holy name we pray. Amen. This altar is open today. If you'd like to pray with us, we'd love to have you. Anybody want to pray today? You want to come? Seek the Lord for a little while around the altar. Pain, wealth, or Let's seek the Lord just a little while today. More Pour our hearts all out to you. This world Pour our hearts out to you. More than anything in my life, I've got to make it. Take my possessions, great or small, friends and family.